Hey, everybody, it's great to have you here on If You Don't Like That. Jerry Reynolds, Ryan in Sacktown. We've got a lot to talk about. Game three tomorrow. Jerry coming up in just a moment. And we bring in holy moly, Jim Bob Bowley. Jerry, how are you? Great, great. Great to, a beautiful day here in Roseville. Uh, great to be a Sacramento Kings fan. Jerry, a week ago, we did a show uh, before game one, and you said you really think the Kings had a good shot in this series. You actually picked them to win, and here they are up to love. And I, I got to tell you, Jerry, I didn't think the Kings could play this way in two different styles. A, a game one style, completely different on Monday night. And they right now clearly to me look like the better team. I think they're the better team. Uh, you know, having said that, I'm still scared to death of them because until you won four, you haven't finished them off. And they, you know, they're they're not gonna go easy. But uh, you know, the depth of the Kings turned out better than I thought. You know, I think we talked about I my feeling was that Malik Monk had to average about 18 a game off the bench for the Kings to have a good chance. Mm -hmm. Of course, he's done way better than that. And that's, uh, I think, a big part of why they've been able to win. Draymond Green, I mean, it, it just never changes with him. I'm so happy that the NBA suspended him. You know, the, the act of stomping on Sabonis is one thing, but inciting the crowd and acting like that is just beyond me. And I got to tell you, I'm really bothered by the fact that nobody, nobody on the Warriors bench tried to restrain him when he was standing on the chairs going at it with the fans. I don't understand that. Well, I I don't, but I'm not surprised because he's been out of control for ten years. Mm -hmm. You know that that's that's who he is. He's a you know he he's a loose cannon, and uh, for all the good he does as a player, he does it equally bad at times. And I thought Joe Dumars and the league got it just right. I mean, they were in the stands, and and uh, yep. certainly I don't think he'd have been suspended. Had he not been Draymond Green, had he not incited the crowd, and had Agreed. he not had about 20 different situations like this in the past. And they basically, uh, you know, I don't think there's anybody more qualified to to make that determination than Joe Dumars. You know, he, he played on the bad boy Pistons. He also a general manager during the malice in the palace. Yeah. So, so he knew uh, the risks that could be taken there. It just takes one fan. You know, and, and uh, so, but to your point, uh, yeah, the Warriors really, uh, really didn't step up like they should have. And, and, you know, and, but again, you know, I, I think they probably know by now that he's impossible to control anyway. I thought Charles Barkley hit it right on the head last night on TNT. And he said, you know, everybody's talking about Draymond across the country. And it really is putting what the Kings have done in the first two games in the back burner. And he said, and that is the fact that they're kicking the Warriors ass. And, you know, I don't know if I would say they're kicking the Warriors ass, but, you know, clearly they look like the better team to me. And I, I think his point is right on. Everyone's talking about Draymond Green this, Draymond Green that. And nobody's really acknowledging how well the Kings played in games one and two. Yeah, it's a shame. And I, I agree with Chuck, too. I mean, those kind of things take on a life of their own. And then, you know, the media gets into having different opinions on it. I really enjoyed uh, Michael Wilbon's take on it. And pardon the interruption I was watching today. And uh, like he said, he changed his mind once he uh, read the league's opinion and Joe Dumar's opinion on the thing. And he said he just totally, totally agreed, you know, that this uh, when you re really look at the totality of Draymond Green, there's no, only one thing to do is suspend him. Yep. Mike Brown, uh, Sea Dog said, officially uh, the coach of the year, uh, a well-deserved honor. Great job by that coach this year with this team. Oh, nobody could have done better. I mean, really, uh, as, as you know, with as Popovich, Red Auerbach, Pat Riley, Phil Jackson, there's not a, a, mm -hmm. a Steve Kerr, there's no coach that could have done a better job with this team and certainly deserving of coach of the year and uh, just, uh, I'm happy for him, even though I don't know the man, but, uh, you know, just a marvelous job with this team.
Jerry, what's been the most surprising part of the first two games from your perspective? The physicality. Uh, you know, I knew the, the, the playoffs are always more physical than the regular season. But I'm telling you, and I love it. I mean, I, I, it's like watching back to the 90s. Uh, you know, these, these baskets are hard to come by, Grant. You know, I mean, it's, you're, you're not getting a lot of uh, easy mm -hmm. uh, takes to the hoop and no contest and all that. I mean, these top guys are earning their hoops. And I think it just makes for a great watch. You know, your, the officials are, are, to my mind, are doing a good job. Because, but they're letting yep. guys put hands on the dribblers. They're letting guys kind of kind of bump cutters a little bit. You know, and during the regular season, none of that is, happens. And that's why you get so many uncontested shots. So I guess the physicality for me, and I, I love it. I love it. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's fair for both teams. You know, as far as the Warriors banning cowbells at Chase Center, the reality is artificial noisemakers are not allowed. So that really doesn't surprise me. They're just going by uh, the rules of the NBA. Okay. Uh, you mentioned this last week, and you thought one of the big keys in this series would be how careless the Warriors are with the basketball. And it has really proven to be that. You know, Jerry, I I'm surprised at the amount of unforced turnovers by the Warriors. That's what I just am puzzled by. Yeah, me, me too. I all year long I've watched them, and and you know I, I do. I think they've gotten too, you know, too casual. That goes with Steph and Clay a lot. You know, certainly Jordan Poole has his own issues. I think trying to do too much, but uh, just trying to be too too creative, too casual, too, mm -hmm. you know, a little over the top. You know, instead of valuing the ball. I mean, the Kings were sloppy in that first game, but but overall they've been taking care of the ball, and 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 they've proven you can play at a fast pace and take care of it. And, and so, but that, but the Warriors, that's been them all year. I mean, very, very casual with the basketball. Jerry, a couple of unknowns entering this series were the guys that have never been in the playoffs before. De'Aaron Fox, that's been answered. Keegan Murray, really ineffective for two games. Davion Mitchell, I think Davion Mitchell's been huge, particularly in game two. Oh, he's been huge and uh, not surprised. I mean, really, uh, you, you almost can't put the value on him because he is so valuable defensively. Uh, I mean, Curry is having to work like a dog just to get anywhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm a little surprised that Kerr hasn't made some adjustments uh, to that, to, to help Kerr. I mean, to help Curry out because uh, if he's going to try to dribble the ball against, against off night, he's going to have an off night. He's going to be three mm -hmm. for 13 from threes because they're all tough threes. Uh, so, yeah, and and to your point too about Keegan, who's not played well at all. I, I mean, I, I'll give him a total pass myself. But uh, Mike Brown again, yeah, it it works out in this series because you can go small, you can go three guards a mm -hmm. lot more, which means uh, most of Keegan's uh, minutes are going to Davion, and it, it works out just perfect. Actually, sure. All right, we talk about no green. For game three, Sabonis is questionable, but just based on his toughness, I got to believe he's going to be in the lineup. If you're Sacramento, you really can't have the table set any better than what they have without Draymond Green on the floor tomorrow. That doesn't mean the Kings are going to win, but it's a pretty good situation to take advantage of. Yes, exactly. You can't have much better, which is that, that would scare me the most because uh, that, you know, they're kind of an injured, uh, injured warrior right now. And, uh, you know, that means Curry, Clay, the, those guys, the Looney, they've been there. Yeah. Uh, they're going to have to have a really good performance from Poole and Kuminga. Mm -hmm. And, you know, DiVincenzo, who was uh, not missing in action, uh, you know, in that second game. But, uh, you know, the Kings couldn't have it better. And, and yep. you know, hopefully uh, Domas can, can play and play effectively. And that's another concern. You know, I mean, obviously uh, – an injured sternum is not, but that guy is, you know, he's uh, tough beyond tough. If you're just joining us on the stream, the news about Mike Brown, he was named coach of the year. So congratulations to him. We talked about that off the top. Sea dog put the first uh, message out that he has officially won uh, coach of the year. What type of adjustments would you expect from Golden State tomorrow in the absence of Draymond Green? How do you think they attack Sacramento? What do you, what are some of the subtle changes that you could see happening? Well, I mean, I think they're going to have to even go smaller. Mm -hmm. uh, 
you know, probably Kuminga will play a lot more. And, and uh, you know, they certainly I, I think they've got to get uh, Pool on the floor more and hope he can because he is capable of mm-hmm. putting up a lot of points and making some plays. Uh, but I, I think the key, honestly, for the Warriors, which if I'm the Kings, I'd be ready for or try to be, is that, that Kerr's going to will try to uh, get the ball out of Curry's hands a little bit himself, not make him fight the ball up the floor, let D. Vincenzo or Poole do that, and, and, and run him off screens to where he's catching the ball with a live dribble in scoring range so, so Davion doesn't wear him down so much. Uh, you know, I, I, you know, I, I mean, I certainly think that's what I would do if I were Kirk, because you, you just can't uh, uh, waste your star player having him fight that fight Davion uh, for ninety feet of the floor. Jerry, everyone's talking about Deer and Fox, rightfully so. They're talking about Sabonis. They're talking about Draymond Green. They're talking about Davion Mitchell. They're talking about Malik Monk. I got to tell you, I, I want to talk about Harrison Barnes and what he means to this team. I, I just, he's so valuable to the success of what's going on right now. Pros pro, absolutely pros pro. If you need a lot of points from Harrison, he can provide them. Mm-hmm. If, you, if everything's going well offensively and everybody's clicking, you know, he'll blend into the background and be a ball mover and, and just fit in. Uh, I just think he's perfect. Very underrated. I yep. don't think sometimes a, a lot of the fans don't really appreciate him. They're always trying to say, you know, trade him or get somebody. Always say, uh, well, yeah, trade him and who are you going to get better? Uh, you know, uh, I, I'm not sure the Kings can, can get somebody that fits better with this team. And, and he's a part, a big part of the reason why the chemistry is good mm-hmm. as it is. Jerry, do the Warriors look old and slow to you? through two games. I mean, the athleticism for Sacramento, uh, I, I don't know. There's just uh, this Warriors team that I'm watching. And again, it's only two games, but it's a big two games. That's not the team I watched in the playoffs last year. And yet they have the same personnel pretty much. Well, I, I think, you know, father time uh, plays no favorites. Now I think they're still really good. And, and, mm-hmm. and Curry and clay are capable of having huge games. I know they are. I hope they don't, but but uh, to, to your point is I've, I've said this at the start. I, I mean, the, the Warriors are a, a, a championship team on the slide mm-hmm. and the Kings are a playoff team on the rise. And, uh, you know, now I don't know, you know, it in my mind is the Warriors are, are never going to win another championship. I think they're a team that pr- can maybe be good for another year or two. Uh, but as far as contending, I don't see it with the current roster. And partly because of, you know, Curry's aging a little bit, still terrific, uh, but he's not going to get better. Clay Thompson is not the same player. Uh, defensively, you see it defensively more than offensively. Hmm. You know, in the past, Clay, you put Clay Thompson on just about anybody, and he was a stopper. And that just, uh, good point. that's not the case anymore. There's not, you know, I mean, he's got good reasons with all the injuries he's been through. So, uh, yeah, to your point. Yeah, that's not quite the same product. You know, they're still very dangerous, yep. but uh, to say they're the best team in the league, I, I don't believe you can say that now no. or, you know, ever. I mean, for they're probably going to have to redo this team in about three years. All right, we got Ryan in Sacktown and Sea Dog saying uh, that Mike Brown's the first unanimous, co- unanimous coach of the year in NBA history. That's really saying something, Ryan. Yeah, it is. Um, Think about the history of coaching in the NBA. And you know what? He deserves it. Uh, He has uh, everybody or every coach in that league understands what he was walking into here in Sacramento with the pressure to break the playoff streak and also the management structure. Oops. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, (laughs) You look better there for a while. Yeah. Yeah. That's what my wife says, too, Jerry. Um, But anyways. Uh, but yeah, the management structure and such. And so uh, credit to him. And you see the product it, you're getting on the court right now. And that's apparent. Ryan's got the Kings winning games three and four on the road. He picked that before the series began. Um, again, I, I'm not so sure. But uh, if if this were to be a four-game sweep, 99% of the people would have thought it would be the Warriors sweeping the Kings. Now, there's a long way to go to do that. What do you think the odds, Rhino, would have been at the beginning of this series on the books for the Kings sweeping the Warriors? 
Uh, probably right up there with the odds of the Kings winning the Pacific Division <laughs> at the, <beginning laughs> yeah. of the uh, yeah. year. But um, yeah, long odds. Somebody's probably holding that ticket. But um, you know, it's it, that's the NBA. That's why they play the game, boys. Yeah, that is why they play the game. Jerry De'Aaron Fox in that game one. I mean, anyone that doubted him, he really had to open up eyes around the league. And again, I think it's pretty obvious based on some of the narratives that we're hearing from the national media. A lot of the national media probably couldn't even name you five players on the Kings. Their comments are just so out in left field. You can tell they don't know anything about this team. But I think after game one and then after get, watching game two, De'Aaron Fox now is on a lot of people's radar. Well, if he, yeah, he has to be. Anybody's got a, two eyes and uh, knows something about basketball. I mean, uh, he was brilliant. He's been in that way pretty much all year. I'd, I'd made a statement some time ago, and I'll stand by it. Uh, he had, he had the best year of any guard in Sacramento Kings history. Mm. And that that's saying something. Richmond. I mean, wow. he, he, you know, when you win Clutch Player of the Year, which he yep. did on a winning team, uh, in my mind, that. That solidified it, but his numbers, uh, what he's done, and certainly the first game of the playoffs, in my mind, no, he's uh, he's there. And, okay, so and you know, when you just you made a statement. Figured you said out. guard. You didn't say point guard. You said guard. So that means you feel that this year was a better year than the best year that Mitch Rich, Mitch Richmond had in Sacramento. Is that what you're saying? Yes, yes. Because, That's saying uh, something, I Jerry. Think, I think that uh, as great as Mitch was. You know, he had some times when he was in full pout mode and different times. And But uh, this young man has uh, basically been a great teammate. Uh, you know, has has the numbers are there, 25 points a game. Yep. Uh, assist to turnovers are there, shooting percentage. And then, then more importantly, played on a better team than Mitch ever did. And, and uh, clutch, clutch. Uh, player of the year, which means help win down the stretch. And I'm, I don't mean that to uh, disparage Mitch because no. he was at that level for five or six years. Uh, so, but I'm just saying for one year, Mitch never had a year like that. Like, uh, like uh, Fox has had this season. So I have a question for... Hang on, Ryan. I want to talk about New Works Plumbing real quick. I want you to call the number on the screen if you have any uh, issues, any needs for plumbing repair, sacserviceplumbing.com, or again, call that number on your screen. New Works Plumbing, they've got a fix for you, and they're available 24-7. Again, sacserviceplumbing.com, or call the number on your screen. New Works Plumbing, they've got a fix for you. Go ahead, Rhino. Yeah, so I'll start with you, Grant. Have you? Is this the biggest jump both of you have seen in terms of performance on the court in all of your years in Sacramento Kings basketball with De'Aaron Fox between a year? I'd have to really give pause and think about all of the players. I mean, if you're going to go back to last year, De'Aaron, I thought, was pouting. He looked very unhappy. I thought he was unprofessional until the trade was made. I thought his press conferences were subpar. I thought they were lackadaisical, which I was critical of him because the Kings had opened up the bank vault for him and mm -hmm. given him the max deal. And I expected more of him from a leadership role. I thought he checked out last year. So if I'm going to go from what I saw last year to this year, the jump has been profound. I mean, off the top of my head to recollect my 32 years of announcing the Kings, uh, I don't know. Jerry, do you have anyone off the top of your head that you would look at who made that type of an improvement from one year to the next? Yeah, if I, I think there's two guys that come to mind, and I, I, I'm i not saying they're more so or, or whatever, but but I mean, I thought we were re remarkable. Isaiah Thomas and, uh, and Kevin Martin. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Kevin basically went from kind of a, a reserve to a 20-point scorer, and Isaiah, you know, obviously nothing was expected of him, and uh, really his by his second year was a 20-some 20, 20 point-a-game scorer, and of course, front office and Everybody didn't uh, didn't even know what they were watching, <laughs> sure. <laughs> you know. But that, that still frustrates me. Uh, when you look at the way the Kings are playing right now, how sustainable is this, Jerry? I mean, could we be looking at a pretty long playoff run? I don't want to concede anything. I'm not saying they're even going to win this series, but they're in the driver's seat, and we all know that things can change in the playoffs in one game. But you know, when you look at how the Kings are playing, and you look at the rest of the teams in the West. Why not, right? I mean, I could see this team, you know, really playing for for a good part of the spring. They're, they're playing as good as anybody else yep. in the West. Yep. I mean, I I'm not saying they'll win the West, but they could. 
I mean, yep. they legitimately could win the West. Now there's two or three other teams you could say that about as well. Uh, so it's a long haul, but but there's nobody in the West that's just that you would say is clearly better than the Kings. There's three or four, I'd say, certainly are as good and maybe have had a little more, uh, have proven a little more over the last couple of years. All right, we thank you for the super chat. You know, as far as one-sided official officiating, I think the officiating for the most part has been very good in this series through two games. I, I can't gripe, and I don't think either team, and in this case the Warriors, can point at the officiating for any reason why they're down 0-2. They're down 0-2 because the Kings were better than in game one and game two. It had nothing to do with the officials. So I don't know where this, as you said, false narrative or narratives coming from. I don't really pay attention to that. You know, again, there are times when we have to point out the officials and say, gee, you know, they, they aired big time and they may have cost the team a game that has not happened yet in this series. So I personally, me, Grant Napier, I don't have any problem from the officiating. And I, if I were a Warriors fan, I still wouldn't pick on the officiating. That's not why the Warriors are down. Oh, two Jerry, you agree with that? I think the, the first game was absolutely a classic as far as officials. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's as good of officiated games I've ever seen. Uh, you know, great ball game. You didn't even know. Point, I mean, the officials, they wasn't hardly a questionable call. Now, certainly each home fan can always, you know, always find reasons or think they're getting screwed because they always do when they're not. Right. But uh, then the second game wasn't wasn't as good, but certainly very fair. Uh, the few few missed calls went both ways. As I said, they're let, it's very physical, but it's physical both ways. And so, you know, yeah, I get the, you know, I'm reading some of the stuff from the warrior side of it. And basically um, they lost twice. And so the referees are the fault. No, the referees aren't the fault. Uh, <laughs> you were outplayed. You were defeated fair and square. And if the Kings had lost those two games, I'd have said the same thing to Kings fans. Me too. The officiating has been excellent. What do you think about that, Ryan? Um, I think the officiating has been the first game, like Jerry said, it, it was perfect. We didn't even know who was calling the game. So that's what you want. Uh -huh. um, the second game, what I would say is I think the officials, they had set kind of a precedent for how the game was going to be played. It was a little bit more physical. And then on a drop of a dime, it became very touchy. And they were calling a lot of fouls. And I think that and that affected both teams. It went both ways. But overall, you know, it's been very good. All right. Ryan and I had lunch at Bennett's today in Roseville. Uh, I had the redfish. And uh, Ryan, you went in a different direction today. I was impressed. and uh, But we loved it. I actually had lunch at their uh, Sacramento location yesterday with my son and his girlfriend. And uh, had the uh, New York steak that's cut. It is so freaking beautiful. Today I did the... Redfish with the sautéed spinach. Don't forget, they're coming to Rockland as well. Bennett's, their food, their menu is great. Love going to both their locations. They have uh, the prime rib on the weekend, the weekend brunch. They have over 50 different types of wine available by the glass. What did you order today again, my friend? Got the uh, spicy chicken, bacon, and pimento sandwich. It was wow. so good. I would have got kicked out of the house if I didn't bring half home to my wife. <laughs> All right. There you have it. I took Jerry there uh, when I was in town last time and uh, we had lunch there. As a matter of fact, Jerry, you and I are going to lunch there next week. You don't know it, but I'm going to call you and we're going to get sit down and have lunch together. But I love Bennett's. I love the food. And I want to say thank you to them for all of their support. All right, Jerry, game three tomorrow. I mean, we, without Draymond Green, though, I mean, do you think are we going to see the the best that the Warriors have to offer, or are they right now the team that we saw in the regular season, Jekyll and Hyde up and down, no consistency, or do you feel that this team still can put together a 48 minute game? Well, I'd still be very wary of them because I mean, you know, again, Curry, Clay Thompson, uh, Looney, they've all been there, done that. Uh, yeah. They don't have a, uh, uh, Draymond, but, uh, you know, Draymond isn't the same player he's been either the last few years. I mean, Good if you point. really look at it, I mean, he's slipped a full notch. He, he is Mr. Triple Single. And uh, <laughs> and so uh, if, you know, Kuminga has the ability, uh, which scares me, he has the ability to add, add some real offense to this team. Now, you know, he's been up and down, but, uh, but he's the kind of scary player uh, for me, because you just don't know what he might do. 
he might go for 20. He's capable of putting a 20 spot up tomorrow, which Draymond couldn't have done. So, uh, you know, yeah, I, I know Mike Brown knows this, and then he, he's going to try to make sure that guys don't even think about the fact whether Draymond's there or not. I'll tell you something that's very odd to me, Jerry, and I want to get your take on this from being a former coach in front office. The Kings play tomorrow, and then they don't play again until Sunday. It's a 90-minute bus ride from downtown San Francisco to Sacramento. From what I have been told, the Kings are not coming home tomorrow to utilize their facility on Friday and Saturday and then bus back down. They are actually spending the entire time in downtown San Francisco. I just found that to be surprising. What, what's your take on that? Yeah, I, I do too. I, I think, uh, I, you know, I don't want to second guess, but I guess I am. I, I just, I think that the team was such a short bus ride home. Uh, it almost be better off to get back for, even if it, you know, if they want to go back on Saturday afternoon or something, that'd be, that'd be okay too. It's, it's really, but just to be, in your own bed, in your own practice facility, I think there'd be a lot of positives to that. Not to mention walking down uh, downtown San Francisco is not the safest place in the world right now, but we'll, we'll save that for another show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't be one of the top 100 places I'd want to go. <laughs> right, are you surprised by that? Um, I am and I'm not. I mean, Mike Brown seems to be real old school and I think he wants to keep the guys focused and keep things regular. I mean, when you're on the road in the NBA, typically you're not staying at home two days before the game. You're the away team. So, um, I think that it, it's fine to me. I mean, you guys are the experts on whether that makes a big difference or not. Well, there's no six hour traffic after a game on a uh, Thursday night. You, you know, by the time, the team showers, does all their media, and gets on the bus. It's It would be 90 minutes to go from downtown San Francisco at uh, 11 o'clock on a Thursday night to the arena downtown in Sacramento, okay? So six hours. Yeah, if you're driving sideways, maybe it's going to be six <laughs> hours. But, you know, again. But, hey, it is what it is. Mike Brown, you know, as you like to use the term, Jerry, he's been around the block a couple of times. So, so far he hasn't done anything wrong this year. So we'll go with him. We'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, I sure would. Yeah, that, uh, you know, he he's uh, – anything he says is he's convinced of, uh, I'm on board. All right. Ryan, what do you think tomorrow? You still staying with your prediction, right? You think the Kings win tomorrow, huh? Yeah, I'm staying with my prediction. Um, I, You know, these guys are the Golden State Warriors. They're champions. And now you've mm -hmm. given them a reason to have a chip on their shoulder, right? So um, I expect them to come out and fight. But I think the Kings have such a distinct advantage on the inside now um, for game three. And it can be a completely different game where you utilize, uh, as long as Sabonis is healthy and okay, Utilize him, utilize Fox, get or utilize Len, excuse me, and um, bang around with those guys. Because like Jerry said, this has been a very physical series. And if you overpower them in three, it's going to be a very big uphill battle for, for them in four. Jerry, what are you thinking for tomorrow? Well, I, I really kind of uh, feel like the Kings can get the one tomorrow. I, I would really would be a little more concerned on the fourth one because Draymond be back, uh, champions, you got to knock them out, you know, and they're, I, I think that will be, I thought the third one would be the toughest, but I think with what's all happened, yeah. I think the Kings have got a much better chance in the third one, but I really, really, I think the fourth one would be awfully tough to get that one to close them out. So I think they'll have to, hopefully if things go well, they can close them out. All right, I want to talk to you about Gold Country Veterinary and Hospital. They're located in Auburn. They serve the uh, foothills and the greater Sacramento area. They are a full-service veterinary medicine. They do dentistry, surgery, and wellness care, and they're also dedicated to urgent care. They have advanced internal medicine. They have full surgical care from spay and neuter packages to advanced orthopedic procedures such as ACL repairs, dentistry, and much more. Uh, they have the most modern technology. They're also very proud of their pain management protocols. That's Gold Country Veterinary and Hospital in Auburn. So tomorrow it is going to be a fun day for Ryan and I. We are going to be downtown once again at Soul Street Midtown, right on the corner of L and 16th. Ryan and I will be down there beginning uh, to do our show at 6.15. I will be down there earlier. I'm going to do my Listen Up show from the restaurant beginning at 5. So uh, come on down. Spend some time with us. We had a really 
good turnout. I mean, it was outstanding on Monday night for game two. And uh, we're really happy to be able to go down there and do it again tomorrow. That's Soul Street Midtown. We'll be doing the pre, half, and post. And Jerry, I, I got to apologize to you. I know Ryan got a text from you asking if you know we needed you. Uh, I didn't even reach out to you because honestly, I thought you'd be in bed by 10 o'clock on a, on a game night. So that's why I didn't even reach out to you. <laughs> Well, I was in my pajamas. I'll tell you that. Uh, so, so no harm, no foul, as they say. Yeah. Well, we would love to have you on tomorrow. If you're up, if you want to chat, I'll send you the link and it's up to you. If you want to join us, uh, you're okay. more than uh, welcome to do so. Absolutely. Send the link. And uh, yeah, if I'm, uh, you know, somewhat uh, cognizant of things, uh, you know, we'll see it definitely on Sunday, uh, the, sh the earlier game. I'm, I'll be, yep. I'll be bright and, sharp i'm pretty sure <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right jerry thanks very much good rest of you i'm going to you guys do the same enjoy being on with you as always so uh, take care thanks right, jerry. Stuff from jerry man i love that by the way if you're new uh if you have not yet subscribed please subscribe to the channel and give us a thumbs up hit that like button uh it would mean the world to us so ryan tomorrow we're gonna have a lot of fun again down on the corner of l and 16th that's right. Soul Street Midtown. Come on down and have fun. Soul with us. Street. It's going to be a blast. Yeah, it's going to be a great time and uh, cost you nothing to get in. Just come say hi. Come watch the game. Come have some food. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll see another Kings win. Uh, you can't get a refund on the shirts. I'm sorry. What I would suggest is you give them to somebody that would uh, enjoy them. OK, so thank you very much. I appreciate that. All right. Um, and by the way, we will have shirts for purchase tomorrow down at soul street midtown so if you have not yet had a chance to pick up your shirt we will be more than happy to uh sell you one we have the white shirts right now that's hanging over uh ryan's shoulder there so come on down and see us at the uh, soul street midtown and i also want to say thank you to fosters and paws they are a group of animal advocates they work primarily with dogs in shelters and if you are unable to adopt they are very appreciative of any donations which goes towards uh, food for the animals and shelter and everything else. Uh, their mission statement is right there on the website. I love it. They also work with young children to teach them the lifelong benefits of owning an animal. That's fostersandpaws.org. Ryan, tomorrow's going to be fun again, my friend, and I'm happy that you will be on location with me tomorrow. We're going to have a blast down at Soul Street. I'm looking forward to it, partner. All right. Really appreciate everybody joining us here. Congratulations to Mike Brown for winning the Coach of the Year unanimously, first time in the history of the NBA that that has happened. Join us tomorrow. All right. Pre-game, halftime, post-game. Come watch the game in person down at Soul Street Midtown. So long, everybody.